Hello, everyone. Welcome to the market simulation call for summer 2021 release. My name is Anshuman Vadya. I'm your market simulation coordinator. And today is June 21st. Calls and webinars are recorded for stakeholder convenience, allowing those who are unable to attend to listen to the recordings after the meeting. The recordings will be publicly available on the ISO webpage for a limited time following the meeting. The recordings and any related transcription should not be reprinted without the ISO permission. We have the following agenda today. We'll talk about the upcoming map stage availability. And we'll talk about the remaining market simulation initiatives for summer 2021 and their timelines. Then we'll talk about the initiative separately. We'll go over the known issues and then a quick reminder about the system interface changes and then we'll talk about the next steps. So uh, for map stage availability, we still have the same map stage scheduled maintenance that was shared in the last meeting. We have an OMS UIN API outage uh, from 6.24 to 6.28. And for Cyber UN API 6.25, is still tentative. We haven't confirmed it yet. That's the data. Uh, anybody has any questions regarding the availability of map stage? All right, moving on. So last week we completed the market simulation for phase two of resource adequacy enhancements track one and phase three for summer 2021 readiness. Being said that we are still keeping this week to do any to help out market participants to perform any uh, unstructured testing that they want to complete during this week before the functionality goes live. Any questions for the projects and their timelines? Hi, Inchman, this is Chen Yu. Good afternoon. I do have a couple Good questions. Um, so Go question ahead. one is that um, last week I recall that you mentioned the RDRR component. This is for summer readiness phase two. The Mm -hmm. Going through the uh, RTPD process, um, it's target to go live uh, tomorrow, and I wonder if there is any update for that. I don't have an update for you, Chinu, right now. Is anybody on the call from Crisis I have any update that I don't have? All right, let me get back to you, Chinu, on this topic. and. Uh, I'll gather information and send it to you. Thank you. Um, so, in a uh, second question I have is also regarding to the summer readiness phase two. Um, there's a settlement um, ticket, and then Kaiser going to republish the June 4th statement. And um, I uh, last week um, understand it pushed to this week um, by tomorrow, so I just want to know, is coming today or tomorrow? So we're still on track to do it tomorrow. I mean, uh, I, don't, I haven't heard any other updates that we will not, that if we will be able to do it or not, but I mean, the update I have is we are still on track for tomorrow's trade day. Okay, so just want to let you know, um, our SMEs has other obligations so today, if I mean, if Kaiso can publish it today, it will be better than tomorrow. Because after, if it's tomorrow, we might have to wait for a few days before we really have time to validate it. Just a FYI. Thank you. Thank you for the information, Junior. I will see what we can do here internally. Uh, if we are able to do so today, I will let you know. I will send you an email. That would be great. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions regarding the initiatives and the timelines? Uh, yes, hi, hi, this, this is Kyle Kyle with Salt River Project. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. This was just a follow up to Chun Yu's question on the um, settlement statement. This is for trade day six for an additional recalc, is that correct? Yes. Yes, okay.
Hi, so my I had one more question. On, yeah, so on summer 2021 readiness, export wheeling and load scheduling priorities, I got a question for my group. Uh, they're asking, when will we see the published structured testing plan? And do we have an idea when we're going to have the structured simulation start date? So right now it looks like it says to be determined. That is correct. So I have more information for it in upcoming slide, but you know uh, I'll just say it out here. Uh, we have some master file changes that uh, are live, and we have more information on that come in upcoming slides. Uh, we don't have an information on the in, uh, the structured simulation as of now. We are trying to get more details on it, and hopefully by next market simulation call, I will have the scenarios that we'll use for testing the export wheeling and load scheduling priorities. So, yeah, that's the update. Okay. Great, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions that we can answer here? Yes, hey, Anshuman, this is Isaac, what I see. Uh, my question is regarding the OMS um, structure scenario testing for resource adequacy track one. Mm -hmm. So I think those structure scenarios required us to submit plan outages into web OMS. And if you're gonna run your right. scenario on June 28, that means those plan outages have to be submitted by well, actually, we've already passed. It was the 20th that we would have had to submit those outages in to the system. So, okay. uh, this um, is Sandhya. I, I, I think you can submit planned outages for future dates and test your can, scenario. But, if you're gonna run, but it looks like you're running your structure simulation on the 28th, right? Is that... That is correct, but you could on 28, you can actually change, uh, you know, the future outages to verify. So, the yes, we, we know. Uh, yeah. So, um, what is your, I guess, your official date that you're going to be settling and, and, um, but, well, there's no settlement, I guess, but then when is the official date that you'll be running those scenarios so that we can submit outages into the system accordingly? It's the 28th, the, the, 20, the 28 will be too late, right? The, the 28th is when we are going to be having the code in the system for you to then disallow the increase in curtailment. So you can park those outages well in advance. You can create those outages and do nothing with it until that code comes in. And that code at that point in time will, will help you uh, test the fact that you cannot change the curtailment beyond the maximum for any given trade date in the future. Sure. You can start an well, outage starting on 28th and you know probably running through the end of the month and beyond as well, and having different curtailment points, you know, uh, different maximum curtailment points across those trade dates. And each of those trade dates, if you try and change the curtailment, you cannot exceed the maximum for a given trade date. So that's the test you can do once the code gets dropped in the environment. Sure, but then, so my question would be, I'm able to submit an outage say today for the 29th, mm -hmm. that's the first date that uh, Web OMS will consider that as a planned outage. Right. Okay. So I submit an outage today for the 29th, and then uh -huh. the code will be available on the 28th, right? Yes. And then That's I would submit the outage yes. on the 29th. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yes. And you can check the outage that is that is classified as planned, and you can you can try and uh, you know um, the outage would have would need to start. So on the 28th, if you try and uh, you know change an outage. Beginning on the 29th, you will be able to. You will need to wait for the 29th and then start, uh, you know, checking your scenario because at that point the outage would have gone to the out state, and then you, you, the system would disallow you from increasing curtailment. Yes, I understand all of that. <laughs> so, okay. what I'm trying to make is, you know, if I submit an outage today, the earliest I can submit for a plan sure. out on the 29th. Okay. Come Basically. On, yeah. I won't be able to even play out the scenario until the 29th. One for my judge is in the car. Sorry, whoever is not speaking, could you please put yourself on mute? Yes, you're right. Okay. That is correct. The earliest planned okay. date would be the 29th. Okay.
Okay, I understand. That's what I'll do then. Uh, but just kind of, uh, yeah. Yeah, I just want to let you uh, want to confirm that uh, even if I submit an outage today for the 29th, um, that outage can still be tested on the 29th. After, even though your code is not available until the 28th. So my me submitting an outage ahead of time doesn't doesn't interfere with the code that you're putting in on the 28th, and I can still use the outage I'm submitting today for the 29th to execute that scenario. I guess that's what I'm yeah, trying to because, say. Yes, because you're creating them today. Now, if, if oh. there are participants that have already created planned outages in the past, and you know they, they, they have a start date of 27th or earlier, and, it, and it's still active at the point when the code gets dropped, then they could be testing that scenario sooner. So it's really the date when you create your outage that then, you know, from that point on eight days forward is your planned outage. You are correct. Okay, thank you. Sure. And Isaac, uh, just to reconfirm that we will have the code uh, for OMS changes on 28th and starting from 28th onwards, uh, you can choose any date to do this testing until we go live on July 12th. We'll have the same code in map stage and we will make the map stage environment available for testing for till July 12th and onwards. Great, thanks. Thank you. Hi, this is Chen Yu. I, I just want to clarify because I think I may hear something um, that I'm a little confused. So the call coming on the 28th, but if we submit any outage now towards, you know, before June 28th, but the outage day is on or after June 28th, so the new rule will apply to the outage we supply. For the day, look at the outage day, any outage day from June 28th to future, it will be abide by the new rule. Is that correct? That is correct, and there's another criteria that, that the outage should have started. Because if the outage has not started, you have the opportunity to change the curtailment. Once the outage right, right. starts, that's when the, the rule gets applied. Okay. Okay, so... Uh, the, other, the other thing, Shunyu, I want to call out, and I think you, you, you may be inferring that, or, you know, I just want to clarify. If there are outages in the system, it's not that all new outages from this point on will only be tied to this rule. When we drop that code, it will be for applicable to all KISO outages, any that were previously created as well. So from the, from the point when we drop, when, when that, that rule gets into that environment, uh, for existing outages as well, if they are active, then you know, the, the rule will still be applied. So you, you may have been able to change the curtailment for an, a long running outage in the past, but after we drop that code, you will not be allowed to change that outage past its max curtailment limit for that given trade date from that point on for any future trade date. Thank you, that, that is the point I tried to clarify. I think you answer it, thank you very much. Sure. Perfect. Thank you, Sandhya, for the information. Any other questions that we can answer here? All right. Hello? Moving on. Um, Go ahead, Alwan. I can hear you. Yeah. The only question I, I wanted to quickly ask was, um, we had asked to test the minimum state of charge constraint uh, from tomorrow through Friday. Um, I'm not sure if it's, it's not showing as active on our resources, and I just want to, for tomorrow, so I just wanted to check and see whether you'd be able to, if not for tomorrow, if we could try to make sure that we do it for Wednesday through Friday, because we have a few different scenarios you want to uh, test. So, Alva, we are prepared to uh, support all the testing on the market side and on the application side. Uh, we're still discussing internally if we would be able to publish all the settlement date. I'm not sure about that as of this point. Uh, but we would be able to create the scenarios and, you know, display the results on OSS, CMRI, yeah. and all the other systems. But settlements currently, the, the dates we have is tomorrow's date and Thursday's date. But we are checking internally. Okay. I'm, I'm not on the settlement side. I'm on the front office side. So I, um, 
that's that's something for our settlements people to be concerned about. I think we were we wanted to see if there was good cost recovery implications. Uh, but right now, I'm still just trying to make sure that, for example, the state of charge limits are published and trying to understand their meaning. And I noticed there are no state of charge limits published for tomorrow. So I'm, I'm guessing that the constraint wasn't put in for tomorrow. And I just wanted to ask if possible to have the uh, the constraint active for Wednesday through Friday. Yes, it will be available from starting. Actually, it's available right now till Friday. Okay, but then you would publish presumably state of charge limits for any days where it was active, right? Or at least that's what we would expect if we had a if we have a non-zero award in the day ahead market, we would expect to see some uh, minimum state of charge information in the uh, the state of charge limits uh, report. Right. Yes. Right. So I think at this point, I'm not sure if it, if it was active for tomorrow, for the 22nd. All I'm asking is if maybe I'm wrong, but if if uh, if we could just make sure that it would be active for for Wednesday through Friday, It'd be very helpful. All right. Us. Yeah. Definitely. Let me work with my SMEs to see why you're not seeing the awards for today. But let me get yeah, back I see to the you award, on that. I, great. I, I see the awards. I just don't see the state of charge limits. So that's that's why I was thinking it wasn't active. I see. Okay. Let me get back to you on that one. Thank you much, Anshuman. Appreciate it. Okay. Thanks. All right. Any other questions that we can discuss here? Okay, moving on. Uh, this is just a scenario description for how we announcements phase two and phase three, which we completed last week, and we are uh, allowing our Hi, Inchman, we cannot hear you. Chunyu looks like uh, he dropped. I can see him on the on this WebEx. Looks like he dropped. He may have some internet problems. Let me let me try oh, to ping okay. him to our Skype to see if I can get we can get him back. Okay, thank you. Look, looks like even the the whole presentation dropped. The whole WebEx dropped. So let me just see if I can find him. I'm sorry I was cut off in the WebEx meet. Uh, I hope everybody can hear my voice right now. Yeah. Yes. Sorry for the delay. All right, so this is the uh, scenario descriptions for summer readiness phase three and phase two, which we completed last week, and we are continuing our testing this week. Any questions regarding the scenario descriptions? Hi, um um, I have a question. This is more regarding to the system. I mean, I, I did text you on this, or we, we did exchange um, some communication on this. So, since Kaiser teams here, um, does anyone aware the ADS query tool is not working in MapStage? So, uh, Tony, as I mentioned, I was not aware of this issue, and you know, I will work with my SME to see uh, where the issue is. But uh, is there anybody on the call that can provide uh, insight on this issue right now? Hey, uh, uh, Anshuman and Chunu, is the issue that the ADS query tool is not working in MapState? Yes. Yes. Okay. So let me check, and I um, uh, let me check right away, and I'll, I'll give an update in the call. Just, uh, Great, thank you. That would be helpful. Thank you. Thank you for those. Uh, any other questions that we can uh, talk about here before for those gives us an update? All 
All right, uh, I'll move on. For summer readiness 2021, uh, we have export wheeling and load scheduling priorities. Uh, we have an update. Uh, we are adding the new GRDT and IRDT files for supporting this export wheeling and load scheduling priorities project. If you want to register a new resource, then get new IRDT file for it to rtd at kaisa.com. Uh, the results for requests for month of July and August 2021 are due by June 29th. And if you want to designate a resource to support self schedules at scheduling points packed by non RA capacity, you may do so by submitting the updated GRDT version 15 with the export support column set to Y. Uh, these, uh, these updates will be subject to the five business day timeline for master file update. And uh, due to timing of the first decision on the tariff provisions expected by June 27, if, you're, if you wish to do an expedite effective date, please send us an email at rdt at kaisa.com. Does anybody have any questions regarding this announcement? My instrument, is this announcement or this requirement is applied to production, correct? So I have Anne here with me uh, on the call. Anne, could you provide an update on this? Hi, yes, this is a production. Okay, thank you. And uh, instrument, do you have any requirement for MEF stage um, um, in terms of for testing? I, I do not have any other requirement than this. Uh, for testing right now, Chunin. Okay, if you do, just uh, keep us posted. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions that we can talk about here? I, I guess I, sorry, I have another question, Eshman. So, Speaking of this piece, it's the new component for the GRDT for summer 2021. Are you talking about, yeah, the I mean the GRDT. Yes, these are the new fields. There are new fields added to the GRDT template. Is that what you're asking for? Yes. Yeah. And so I assume there is a new column. Ah. Okay, and, and was okay. this part of the, so did you have an update uh, text spec or the old or the summer text spec already covered this piece? Let me defer that to Anne and would you be able to yeah. provide the more details on it? Yes, this is already covered in the text spec. This is just a, a, a reminder on the communication for um, production implementation. Um, since there's a deadline of June 29th for, <clears throat> to register a uh, resource ID for that PT wheel, um, we wanted to make sure that that message is getting out to everybody. Thanks. Thank you, Anne. You're welcome. Any other questions that we can talk to? All right. Uh, yeah, uh, Benjamin. Great timing for this. Go ahead. Yeah, hey, uh, I see, I mean, what uh, General just uh, reported, I see that issue. So we'll, we'll work in internally and send an update. Uh, 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 you know, uh, I will email you as soon as it is fixed. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. For resource efficacy enhancements track one, we have completed the structured testing last week, and we are continuing our testing for uh, any answer, structured scenarios that market participants wants to test. Map stage will be available for that. 
So business requirement specification documents and structured scenario documents are available at the following links here. If anybody is interested to uh, check out these documents. Any questions we can answer here for uh, RA enhancements track one project? All right, moving on. This is a timeline for OMS summer release. Uh, we don't have any update from the last meeting here. We're still awaiting the code to be deployed in map stage by 28th of June. Any questions regarding the OMS timeline? We had a question in the last uh, call about the OSI 2021 enhancement and if there's going to be structured scenario for it. So OSI 2021 enhancement is a separate independent project. Uh, we are not planning to have any structured scenarios for it. But in the BRS for OSI project, you might find uh, some cases which are unstructured and we welcome any market participants if they want to uh, go ahead and test any of those unstructured cases on MapStage environment once the code is deployed. Any questions regarding the OMS summer release timeline or the OSI project? All right, uh, moving on. Thank you, man. Uh Oh, one second, this is Sandhya. I uh, just want to add to what's already there on the slide. Uh, as a part of OSI, um, it's, we also had a request to enhance the curtailment and non-operational generation report, generator report that's being posted to the CAISO website. So we are, uh, that is because not something that would go through market simulation, this is just an FII, that we'll be adding more data, a couple, uh, you know, three additional BAs uh, will be included in that report, and uh, I'll be providing more details in the talk tomorrow. I just want to call it out here as well. In case anybody has any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Thanks for the updates, Sandhya. I'll wait sure. Thank you, a Nishan. couple of seconds for any questions. All right, moving on. Uh, we had the following two known issues remaining for the RAE project, which uh, uh, I, I got the status after the last meeting where both the, both the issues were closed. One was, uh, one was closed and one was resolved because we didn't code changes. Uh, the filtering for known issue number two will be at SC level and it will not be at resource level. That's why there was no code change needed. Any questions on these uh, known issues that were resolved? All right, moving on. This is a quick reminder about the system interface changes. We have any update uh, this week, today from the last week. Um, any questions regarding the system interface changes? All right. Oh, well, that's all I had for today's teleconference. The next WebEx is scheduled on June 24th at 2 p.m. And I'll open up for uh, any other issues that we can address here. Well, perfect, no issues. Thank you everyone for joining the call. Uh, we'll see you back again on June 24th. Thank you. Thanks, Anshu. Thank you. Thank you.